Hey everybody, Lloyd here, and for today's video, we're gonna see how long I can commit to this bit in my hot ass basement. Just kidding. Today we're making the next cocktail in my Abyss Bar series, which I'm basing on the Glyphid Slammer. Now the game describes this beer as one part strong ale and one part energy drink, but some bad engineer already covered this angle. I wanted to take a literal approach in a bit of a different direction. Now when I hear Glyphid Slammer, I think of slamming Glyphids. That's right people, we are drinking bugs today. More on that later. The game also lists it as a strong beverage, so instead of slamming this one, I'm calling it the Glyphid Sipper. So I decided to build it off of one of the most classic sippers, the Negroni. A Negroni consists of equal parts gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth, and is typically served on the rocks and garnished with a twist of orange. It's cold out these days, and when it's cold, I'd rather be drinking whiskey. So we're going to be making a popular variation on the Negroni called the Boulevardier. This simply calls for whiskey to sub in for the gin. By now you're probably wondering where the bugs come in. Cochineal is a scale insect, and their bodies produce something called carminic acid. This acid can be used to create a red dye which dates all the way back to the Aztec and Mayan people of 2nd century BC. It's extracted from, as this awesome Wikipedia entry puts it, the raw, dried, and pulverized bodies of insects. By the beard. More specifically, the bodies of female cochineal insects are dried, crushed into a powder, and boiled in a solution of ammonia or sodium carbonate. Salt is then added to isolate the carmine, which gives it its vibrant and distinct red color. This has been used throughout history to- uh, history by the way that's actually super interesting and I highly recommend you look into it after the video. You're doing great. This has been used throughout history to dye everything from fabrics, to makeup, to food, and you guessed it. Liquor! I mentioned Campari before, which is a bitter Italian liqueur. It gets its color from, you guessed it again, cochineal extract. At least, it did up until 2006. However, we are in luck because Heirloom makes an Alkermes liqueur which is in fact made with cochineal extract. This is a little more savory and a little less bitter than Campari, which will go great with what we're talking about next. Whiskey! I like a rye whiskey in my Boulevardiers because it adds a bit of spice and richness that pair really well with the bitter and sweet components. Speaking of spice, we're going to manipulate our rye a bit to make this a more unique cocktail. We're in the tail end of fall as I film this, but we all know by now that fall is really pumpkin spice season. Now before half of you scramble below to dislike this video, let me explain what pumpkin spice is. It is simply a blend of clove, nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon. And you know what that makes it? Two spices short of being chai. A classic blend of spices that dates back over 5,000 years. So get over it. Anyway, we're going to be pumpkin spicifying our rye whiskey, and although it's completely optional for this drink, it's super easy, and I highly recommend giving it a shot. First, take half a teaspoon of crushed clove and add it to a large mason jar. Then crush up a whole nutmeg seed and add a few pieces. Slice up some fresh ginger, about five or six pieces. Then a whole cinnamon stick. Lastly, top with 12 ounces of whiskey, give it a shake, and let it infuse for three days. When it's tasting ready to strain, I like to use a reusable coffee filter, which you can find at the grocery store for a couple bucks. They're super convenient and really easy to clean. And if you really like to strain all the bits out of there like I do, you can strain it a second time with an unbleached coffee filter. So now that our pumpkin spice whiskey is ready, let's talk vermouth. Vermouth unfortunately gets a pretty bad rap. This is probably mostly due to the fact that a lot of bars and restaurants use the cheap stuff and they don't store it properly. Vermouth is just a fortified wine, so much like a Pinot Noir or Chardonnay you may typically drink, it oxidizes over time. So if cheap vermouth is sitting out on a bar rail for months at a time, it's not going to taste very good. It's really a shame that's often the first and last experience people have with vermouth because good vermouth is awesome. Speaking of good vermouth, let's talk about what to use in our Glyphid Sipper. I'm going to be using Carpano Antico, which is a classic. It's rich, full-bodied, and has a strong note of vanilla that's going to go really well with our pumpkin spiced rye. Now, it is on the expensive side, so if you didn't have all these ingredients already and you want to go with something a little more affordable, Cochi di Torino is a great substitute. Finally, on to our recipe. Now, as I mentioned before, the Boulevardier keeps it simple with all equal parts. So our recipe is going to be one ounce of our pumpkin spice rye whiskey, one ounce heirloom alkermes, and one ounce of Carpano Antica. And unlike our last Abyss Bar cocktail, this one will be stirred. Now if you don't have a mixing glass, a pint glass will do in a pinch. And if you don't have a mixing spoon, a chopstick or pretty much anything this shape will work just fine. So we'll do one ounce of our pumpkin spiced rye whiskey, one ounce heirloom alkermes, and one ounce of Carpano Antico. Now as I mentioned in my last bar video, I'm getting old and it's making me a bit of a lazy bartender. So Masnothus got me this magnetic stirrer a few years ago for my birthday. Now this is something normally used in a lab, but he thought I could use it to stir my drinks for me. So I'm gonna put my mixing glass on the magnetic stirrer, add my magnet, 
Add some ice. And flip a switch. Now when you do this at home, you'll want to stir for about 30 seconds until you start to feel the glass get cold. Now that our drink is ready, we're going to pour it over ice into a tub glass. My girlfriend just got me these tub glasses, which feature a street map of Philadelphia because Philly's awesome. I'm also going to be pouring my Glyphid Sipper over a large cube because I'm... fancy. Now I completely neglected to garnish my last Abyss Bar cocktail, so I had to come up with something extra deep rock for this one. For our standard Boulevardier garnish, slice off a piece of orange peel. If you don't have one of these, a vegetable peeler works as well, just be careful. Hold each side of the orange peel as you squeeze it over the glass to get all those oils out. Next we need a bamboo pick and Luxardo cherries. Put all that together and we have a pickaxe garnish perfect for smashing those glyphids. So there you have it. Once again, this is all super easy and something you can most definitely do yourself at home. If you get a chance to make yourself a Glyphid Sipper, please let me know in the comments what you think. One quick announcement, I am on Twitter now at DrillingITNO. It may not seem like great timing, but if you know anything about my setup or organizational skills, you'd know I love a shit show. Next time I'm in the Abyss Bar, I'll be doing my take on the Oily Oaf. But until next time, please take a moment to like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Make sure to imbibe responsibly, and as always, rock and stone, brothers and sisters.